See ya! Bye! you could ever want to make and do right, right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And now let's check out what's coming up on today's show. Find out if Stephen manages to beat the clock in today's One Minute Make. In Green Fingertips, we'll show you how to turn a glass of water into a beautiful ice light bowl. And in Fun Fingertips, we get totally spooked with a game of ghostly golf. For all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and play it back later. You can look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. For years, people have wondered what lurks at the bottom of dark, murky lakes. There have been many eyewitness sightings, grainy photographs, even amateur video footage. Most evidence has been dismissed as hoaxes or lies, but today at Fingertips, we can confirm the greatest monster mystery of all time is definitely no hoax. We can reveal the existence of... The Fingertips Sockness Monster. Yep, how would you like this creature slithering across your desk or even your bedroom floor? And would you believe this scaly fella started out as... These old socks. And, of course, a little bit of Fingertips know-how. Hang on, isn't that my sock? Oh, yeah, it is. Now, why is it that you always end up with one odd sock? Well, as long as you have another two to go with it, you can make the fingertip sock nest monster. Now, they haven't got to be the same colour or even the same size, but long socks are what you need. Now, to make the fingertip sock nest monsters two humps, you're going to need two of your old socks. So, if you can give me one more sock, thank you, Stephen, and you can say what to do with the third one a bit later. OK. So, first, lay your socks down like this and cut them off from the ankle. So, just snip right along there. Then you want to get one of your socks and start stuffing it with some newspaper. So screw it up and just stuff it all in one end. Now you want to try and get quite a lot of newspaper in there, but not so it's bulging out the end. You just want it to look nice and chunky. So one more piece should do nicely. And you want to do this to both of your socks because these will create very nice hump shapes. Look at that. Then you want to add the magic ingredient, plaster wrap. So cut some ruler length strips of plaster wrap and dunk it into a bowl of warm water and then just start moulding all the way around your sock. Now, plaster wrap's really easy to get hold of because you can get it from most craft shops and DIY stores and it costs about £5, but it really is worth it because just like I'm doing now, you can mould it into any shape at all and it dries in no time. So keep wrapping all the way around and it's very important to also get quite a lot on the bottom bits because now here's a fingertips top tip you want to scrunch down the ends and flatten them into your surface let's put one more bit on there that should do it Then flatten these ends down and then leave it to dry for about half an hour yep that's nice and dry and you can see that it's standing upright because of the flat ends we made earlier. And we've done exactly the same to our other sock as well. And the head and the tail of the sock, Lester Monster, it's over to Stephen. Hi, thank you. Now, you need to take your third sock and cut it in half. Now, the bit with the two open ends, this is going to be the tail part of the Sockness Monster. And you want to close up one of the ends with an elastic band. So let's just wrap this around there. And stuff it with newspaper, as you did before. So let's put that in here like this. And then cover it with the plaster wrap. Give it a slight bend to give it the towel shape. And when it's covered, it will look like that. Now, for the head part of the sockless monster, you need to take the foot part of the sock. Again, you fill it with newspaper, cover it in plaster wrap, and make sure that the open end is always facing downwards. And when it's covered, it will look like that. Hey, I tell you what, this is taking shape. He's looking good, isn't he? And once all your pieces have dried like this, it's time to get painting. Now, we're painting our one green and yellow so he can hide in the seaweed because, after all, he's a bit camera shy, isn't he? And the final thing to add is the face. Now, for the horns, you're going to use egg boxes. So let's just pop them on there like that. And for eyes, what better than ping pong balls? Hello. Uh, we just put one on there and one on there. And you can do any design at all that you like. Check out these ones. We've given this one a cheeky wink. And you could add pools of splashing water to look like he's gliding through the water. And add some white paint around here to look like the wave break. 
And what about that one? The Bird Scarer. With just a layer of varnish, this sockless monster can live outside to keep the birds at bay. Even squirrels will think twice about going near that one. Or scare your neighbours. And look at this little one down here, made from baby socks. Isn't he sweet? <laughs> so don't throw away your odd socks. Sock it to them with your very own fingertips. Sockless monster. Program where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends from around your house. Today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And have a look at this, right? This is all it takes to a piece of card shaped into a T. Hmm. Intriguing. That's it. Now we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, but see if you can guess along the way. Have you prepared for this, Mr. Mulhern? I am prepared, and I know for a fact you're going to make one of these. You're going to like this. Okay, you ready? Okay, three, two, one, go! Okay, first thing I need to do is just fold over this part of the T, and then I need to fold Five over... seconds gone, Steve. That's not a problem. Fold over this part of the T, and then I fold the long bit up like this. That's and, uh... now coming up for 15 seconds gone. No turning back. That time has gone forever, Stephen. And all I can say is that I do not think you're going to guess what this is. And that goes there. And I say very casually, stop that clock. 25 seconds, very good. How about that? Not bad at all. Yes, would you like to know what it is? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, it is called a squeezy mover. Now, you can squeeze it like this, and when you squeeze down, the back part curves, and it's storing energy, so when you release, it will spring, boop, back up. And not only does it work this way, it also works this way. Hey. Ah. And here's another thing you can do with it. If you just shake the bottom of the tea and round it off and add some little teeth and a slit here, you can make a tucking squeezy mover. <laughs> good, isn't it? <laughs> or how about this wide little fella? Look at him with his very wide little eyes. <laughs> now, here's a reminder of how to do it. So get yourself one of these teas and uh, you want to measure it so that the top part is three times the width of the bottom part and the bottom part of your tea is three, one, two, three and a bit times the width of the top part. And the folds are really easy to do. All you do is fold in the top part like this and you give a crease down and you just leave a tiny gap just there. And the same on this side, just fold it over. Again, leave a gap just here and then fold this one as far as it will go. Nice crease down. And then you just tuck this bit into your gap just there and push it all the way down as far as it will go, and when it will go no more, just give a squeeze at the top. And there you have it, your very first squeezy mover. And look, you could even make some fancy ones like this. Or well, why don't you check out our website? The address is at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you'll find all of our plans and designs there ready to print off. So why don't you make your very own easy piece of squeezy mover? <laughs> or just the mechanism. Try and beat the clock and do it in under a minute. <laughs> These are so cool, and believe it or not, these beautiful ice light bulbs started out life as... H2O. More commonly known as water. I was going to use that. This is Green Fingertips, the past the programme where we show you how to make something from or for the garden. And today we're putting the O into H2O with these Fingertips ice light bulbs. They look great indoors and even better outdoors where they'll glow for ages. They're really simple to make and they really do start out life as water and a few bits and pieces from the garden. To make your fingertips ice light bowl, cut the bottom off a large plastic bottle and do exactly the same to a smaller one. Then put your smaller one inside your larger one and then tape them together without the sides touching. So you just want it to hang over like that and do exactly the same with a piece of sticky tape this side too, making sure you pull that tape quite tightly across. And make sure that your bottle is quite well pushed into the larger one, because that's where your tea light's going to sit. And then you can fill the sides with whatever you're going to use. We're going to go for berries and leaves, so pop them around the side of your bottle. And of course, when you're happy with your design, you can fill it with water. Yep, just get your water and fill it about halfway up. So just be careful not to get it in the centre of it. Fill all the outside bit up. There we go. Now, you may want to add a few pebbles to the smaller bottle, because you can see that it's starting to bob up. And the pebbles will just weight it down. And if your berries or leaves start to pop up, just keep poking them down like that. And now your fingertips ice light bowl is ready to freeze. 
just pop it in the freezer. In it goes. And leave it in there for a couple of hours, depending on the size. Let's have a look. Yep, that's frozen. Right, now to get it out of its mould, first thing you need to do is just tip out the pebbles. And to get the smaller bottle out, all you do is get some lukewarm water and pour it into the smaller bottle. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this should now just slide out. Is it going to work? Oh, hey. look at that. Sorted. Get rid of that water. And now to release it from the bigger bottle, all you do is just place it into some more lukewarm water for a couple of seconds. And this should slide out too. Let's check it out. Is it going to come out? Straight oh, away. Wow. How about that? That looks beautiful, doesn't it, Steve? But you ain't seen nothing yet. If you get yourself a night light, place it into the bowl, then get an adult to light it for you, and then bring the lights down. Have a look at this. That is so beautiful with the light shining through the leaves, isn't it? It looks amazing. It's a lovely effect, isn't it? And this will keep burning until your rice completely melts. So, if you're using them inside, make sure you put them on a saucer so your house doesn't get flooded. And a good idea is to make a couple for the garden at winter time when it gets dark early. And look at this one. We've added some food colouring and some plastic creepy crawlies. And what about the one with the leaves? Very nice. So, get funky in the country and get your fingertips green with the fingertips ice light bulb. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> This is Fun Fingertips, the part of the program where we show you something that's fun to make and fun to do. And today, we're playing golf. Four! Ow! But not a game of golf with your usual hazards of sandy bunkers and long grass. Oh, no. This is Fingertips Ghostly Golf, where your golf skills are put to the test with spooky webs, skeleton hands, open graves and many more creepy surprises along the way. The aim of the game is to reach the haunted castle in fewer strokes than your opponent. Now, the game may look complicated, but you won't be too spooked when we tell you that the game actually starts out as three storage boxes. And what you want to do is cut off the sides as you're going to be using the bases. Now, paint your bases or cover them in some coloured card. Then, on the other side, add two kitchen rolls. So, when you place it back on your surface, it'll be slightly raised. Now, to stop your ball from rolling off the edges, you need to add some straws around the sides, leaving a bit of a gap so you can join it onto your next base. Now, for your ghost train railway track, stick down two pieces of string using some glue, leaving a narrow enough gap so your ball can be guided right the way across your track. And now for the creepy decorations. To make your spooky spider's web, just get bits of string and dip them into PVA glue. Dip it all the way in there. And then lay out the string onto some cling film into a spider web shape, just like that. And then leave it to dry. And when it has, paint it and peel it off your cling film. And then... Position it onto one of your bases. There you go, Stephen. Right, just there. A tricky obstacle. For the second scary pitfall, we're going to make the bony skeleton hand. For this, you need a crisp tube, which you're going to cut a section out of. And this is the tunnel where your ball rolls through. Then get a bar of soap box and just cut a chunk out until your tube fits into it nicely like this. Now, into your soap box, you want to cut some holes. And this is where your fingers are going to go. So, for the fingers, you need four... Corks, which you just push into place. And then for the fingertips, one want another four corks, but this time add a cocktail stick so you can connect your corks together to make your fingers. There we go. And then all you need to do is give it a lick of paint. Paint it black and then add some nice white bony fingers. Now you can add it to section number two. You just place it over the railway track and your ball can run straight the way through it. And now for the last section. One of the main hazards of ghostly golf is the shallow open grave. Beware you don't fall in. You see, this is the reason the golf course is raised on the kitchen roll tubes, so you can sink the grave nice and low. So get your fingertips on a shallow tub and draw around it to make a hole. Then paint your tub a woody colour and pop that into place. And for the gravestone, just cut a cardboard gravestone shape, 
put bits of masking tape over that and paint it, then slot it into the tub. Now join all three sections together and you're nearly ready to play. But there are still lots more things that you can add. OK, Stephen, I'm feeling brave. I'm going in for a closer look. Rather you than me. Whoa, this is spooky. Cone pumpkins with smiley faces. These are made out of painted card. And here are some ghosts that have been made in the same way. And your ball could roll straight through these pipe cleaner ribs. And right into the haunted house made from a margarine tub with sweet tube turrets. <laughs> oh, it's all getting a bit spooky in here. Remember, it's the person who reaches the haunted castle in the least amount of hits wins the coveted title of Fingertips Best Ghostly Golfer. Now, we've made the clubs out of bamboo canes and paper mache bone handles, and we've got cardboard bats. And for the golfing ball, we've just got a ping pong ball decorated as a skull. So, come on in, Fernie. Are we going to have a game? Fern? 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 And next time on Fingertips, stay in touch with your favourite shows as we show you how to make a communication station. All these pictures have a secret in common. Find out what in Techno Fingertips. And in Party Fingertips, we'll show you how to make your party a polar success with the game of Penguin Skittles. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then why don't you check out the Fingertips website. The address is just there. And we'll see you soon for some more... Fingertips! See ya! Bye! There'll be more